my name is Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel video. I'm so excited to have y'all back here together again. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the fifth episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Honestly, the title is too long, so you'll just see what the title is when I upload the video. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started talking about the good for this episode. And the first thing you gotta talk about with this episode that I think it does well, is first off, they actually do it, they actually have a much more simpler story where it's, where one of the, my biggest problems with some of the last couple episodes is that they're always dealing with at least like two stories each episode. And to me, that's not very the best way to do it. With this episode, I feel like they actually tell, they actually tell a simple story about Titania basically stealing the um, She-Hulk name and it's kind of interesting in the way it's all done as you, sorry, excuse me about that. Um, as they kind of dive into, you know, all the history, a lot of the history, but like the, co the track record names of all these names. And so like, it, it's kind of cool in the way they do that. Also, I love the introduction of sort of the Ed Edna Mode type character where He's basically like the guy that creates suits for a bunch of superheroes. And basically that was an mode in The Incredibles. And uh, pretty much the, the, the episode had a good story. It had some funny scenes, had some good jokes. Um, and what also kind of made it even more heart, more, more heartbreaking was that the guy that She-Hulk dated in the last episode where she was dating people the guy literally admitted that people are not interested in Jennifer Walters. They're more interested in She-Hulk. And that's kind of sad as people want to see the, the superhero and not the real person. And that's that's really messed up. It's it, it really is. But hey, that's what people that's how people are. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to the bad. The biggest issue with this episode is really just the whole plot line about track the track trademark names and all of this stuff and it's not really the most interesting storyline to come up with with a show like this and i mean it's funny and stuff but like they really treat it like something like it's something that matters and it really does dive in deep more into this <clears throat> sort of story with the name of She-Hulk. And so, I guess I'm not the biggest fan of it. I don't really have any particular problems, but there's just nothing that really sparked any interest. It was fine, but that's pretty much my final review. Before I get my final score, be sure to down below. What were your thoughts on episode five of She-Hulk? Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate Robert between? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. With that, with that said, let's get all my scores. All right, so that's it for my scores, but we're not done here yet. We have one more thing to do in this video, and that's to talk about some theories I might have for the next couple episodes and future projects. All right, so what we get in this episode actually is pretty exciting because at the very last shot, so one of the things that this, these, this show is famous for doing is that they actually have like an end credit scene for every episode. Like the first one we had revealing Captain America um, is lost his virginity to a girl in 1943 on the USO tour. Then in the second episode, it was really, uh, really just having fun with She-Hulk's fit with Jennifer Walters' family. Episode three, you have She-Hulk and Megan the Stallion twerking. Episode four, you have Wong and the Madison girl doing all those weird stuff and just hanging out. This episode unfortunately didn't have an end credit scene, which surprised me because at the very last second before the, the credits rolled, the the Edna Mode guy picks up a box 
with the yellow mask of Daredevil. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's, wait, wait, why does he have Daredevil's mask? Like, what's going on here? And I'm like, oh, and what all, one, one other thing I liked about this is, uh, as in the multiverse, um, we're kind of exploring like different shoes and off-brand merch of the Avengers. And like, there's stuff of like Avengers and Avengers. And it's kind of cool the way they do that. But like the Daredevil stuff, that's exciting. And I even heard some theories online that, that the Daredevil series from Netflix isn't actually part of the MCU, isn't actually canon to the MCU because I heard that some other guy did like made suits for Daredevil in the other Netflix show and that this is probably, and so it's not the same guys. So if, if he somehow, I mean, obviously, we've, we have, I think this is like the first time we're seeing Daredevil in the yellow and red suit for the first time. And I'm guessing that that other guy in the Daredevil series from Netflix probably made the red suit. And this guy is the one that's making the yellow suit. I'm pretty sure it's gonna, it's gonna find ways to fit in the universe. But that's one of my big theories. And I'm pretty sure we're, we are gonna be seeing Daredevil next week, which I'm very excited for. And, it seems to me like they're going to be doing him right. Uh, so, I, I, I'm excited for this. I'm definitely excited for next week's episode. I cannot wait to see Daredevil. I'm hoping he is in there. So, that's pretty much all my theories I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All my social media is definitely about to come over there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.